In a previous video, we've seen that a PN junction at equilibrium has two currents. One is called the diffusion current. This is due to the majority charge carriers. The holes and electrons are diffusing into each other, causing a current from P to N. And this is an indicator of how much the diffusion current is. It's pretty low right now. And the reason it is so low is because a barrier exists right at the junction. You've seen that due to the recombination effect, almost all the holes and electrons have destroyed each other. An electric field exists and that pushes the holes and the electrons in the opposite direction. And, 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 uh, and we've seen that we can think of it as a potential barrier and that barrier is about 0.7 volt for silicon at, at room temperature. But there's a second kind of current and that current is due to this. This barrier acts like a downhill for the minority charge carriers. The minority charge carriers as a result end up moving in the opposite direction, which causes a second kind of current, we call this drift current, and that current is from N to P, in the opposite direction, because holes are moving in the opposite direction. And again, this is an indicator, and it's very low, because minority charge carriers are very low to begin with. And at equilibrium, the two currents are exactly equal to each other, and opposite, and so the total current is zero. And we've seen this in previous videos, so if you need more clarity, it would be a great idea to go back, watch those videos, and then come back over here. But in this video, we're going to attach some metallic leads, put some wires, and attach and put a battery over here and see what's going to happen. So let's do that. And we can connect our cell in two ways. One, we connect the positive to the P type, or we can even shift this and connect the positive to the N type. Either way is fine. So in this video, let's see what happens when you put the positive to the P type. And this is no ordinary cell. This cell comes with a voltage control device. Ooh, so we can change the voltage how, how much ever we want. Yay, so we can play with this. And right now the voltage is zero, as you can see by the indicator. And let's also attach an ammeter to our wire so that we can keep track of current. Notice right now the current is zero because you are not applied any voltage to this. All right, let's apply some voltage. Let's increase the voltage a little bit. Let's increase it something, let's say 0.2 or 0.3 volt. What do you think is going to happen? Well, notice because the positive is connected to the P type, it starts pushing the holes this way. And similarly, because the negative is connected to the N type, it starts, the battery starts pushing the electrons this way. And as a result, I hope you can see the holes and electrons are now, the majority charge carriers are now being encouraged. They are being pushed to diffuse more. And as a result, the diffusion current starts increasing. And so if you look over here, the diffusion current will go up a little bit. A little bit because you're putting a little bit of voltage. And notice as a result, diffusion is no longer equal to drift. And because of that, there will be a net current flowing. Now since diffusion is from P to N, and that has increased, there will be a total current now going from P to N. And here's a simple way to think about what's going to happen to the entire circuit. We know, that you may have learned already in, in, in circuits and everything, that uh, the electric current in the entire circuit like this must be the same. So if the current over here is flowing from P to N, the current should flow in the same direction everywhere. So there will be a current through this wire as well, and as a result, our ammeter will now show some current and the current will be in this direction. It will be from P to N inside the semiconductor this way. Now it's very interesting to think about how these holes eventually manage to come here and what really happens, how, how do the electrons start flowing and everything, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. As of now, let's just concentrate on how the voltage affects the diffusion current. And there's another way to think about this. Instead of thinking that the battery is pushing the holes and the electrons and increasing their energy, and that's why diffusion has increased, we could think that the battery is just lowering the energy of the barrier. Same thing, right? Increasing the energy of the charges, or you lower the energy of the barrier, the effect is the same. And that's why most people, I think, like to think of it that way. We'll do it that way as well. We'll just imagine that the battery is not doing anything to the holes and the electrons, but just end up decreasing. So let's assume that the barrier, the height of the barrier is decreasing. This is easier because, I'll tell you why. Because if you put 0.2 volt over here, we could just say that the barrier has reduced by 0.2 volt. And because the barrier has reduced, the charges can now start diffusing more. It becomes easier to diffuse. And as a result, I hope you can see even the width of the depletion region is decreasing. 
And as a result, we might expect the drift current to decrease a little bit because the drift was caused due to this potential difference in the first place, right? But the effect is extremely tiny on the drift. And so we can pretty much, you know, assume drift current is a constant because it's a very tiny value anyways. It's all about diffusion. Let's only focus on the diffusion. Okay, let's let's increase this voltage. What do you think will happen now? Well, the effect continues. Let's say we double this voltage. Right now it's 0.2, let's make it, let's say let's double it and let's say they go to 0.4 or something. Well, the height of the battery will further reduce. And as a result, the electrons and holes can diffuse more, the diffusion current will increase. And here's the thing, you might think that if you double the voltage over here, the diffusion current might double, right? No, it, the effect is non-linear because diffusion is a little bit more complicated. It turns out the diffusion current will become more than double. It might be triple or something like that, all right? And the depletion region becomes even narrower. And as a result, the current will increase much more than double though. The current will increase a lot. And eventually, if you get this voltage all the way to 0.7 volt, then all hell breaks loose. Now the barrier height is almost gone, it's zero. The depletion region almost vanishes. The electrons and the holes are now completely free to diffuse into each other, and as a result, the diffusion current skyrockets. It becomes extremely high, so the current becomes very high in the circuit. And so as a result, I hope you can see, when you connect a PN junction this way, P type to the positive terminal, N type to the negative, the diode starts conducting. It allows the flow of charges. And this connection is called forward biasing. The word biasing just means connecting a battery, all right? So in the forward bias mode, the PN junction conducts quite heavily.